Here we are with another model railroad layout. And as you can see, we're gonna have another good one for you to enjoy. We're here with Ron Stevenson and let's take you right to the trains. As we look around, we'll give you the overall flavor of where we're going, and we'll come on down. Ron, good to see you. Hey, great to see you. How you doing, Lou? Good. Thanks so much for inviting us down and letting us hang with you today. Well, thanks for coming over. So let's jump right in because we got lots of trains to talk about. So the first thing is, um, when did you get your first train layout? 1952. Santa came down a chimney with a 4x8 uh, <laughs> layout and a 2046 uh, Lionel Hudson set. And that was all she took. And, and how long have you actually, it's obviously matured since then, how long did, have you had this particular layout? Been uh, working on this layout for uh, 30 years. 30 years. And you had a design. Right. So who helped you with that? And I'm going to have you move over yeah. so I can take a look at that design. Who helped you with this? Uh, so Don a Cardiff is a world-class layout design and builder. Lived here in uh, St. Charles, had his operation here, and uh, learned a lot about how to do a layout from Don, and then he did this design. Detail in there. I gave him all the accessories. I told him I wanted a, a western theme with big mountains, ski mountains, and uh, I wanted to incorporate some of the old Plasticville buildings I had from when I was a kid. I wanted to have this, this tank uh, mountain, and uh, I had a space requirement, 20 by 20. He did it layout to fit in that requirement. Let's take a look. Let's uh, okay. jump right over. We're going to start on the outside. Love the smoke coming out of the daylight. We'll get back to that in a second. But uh, here's the outside of the layout, so to speak. And we've got the airplanes flying overhead. And one thing that I thought was really cool was this display case. Right, another thing, I got that from Don Cardiff. Uh, he had a shop here, and uh, I bought that from Don. It's just a place to display some items. These are things from my childhood. You know, cowboys and Indians, what you played with when you were a kid. Uh -huh. You know, farm tractors, uh, the original Lionel uh, 927 lubricating kit, etc. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was able to put that in here. And then here's your... Here's your yard. Yeah, it's a three uh, three spur yard. I put uh, put this in about five years ago, so that I could have consists ready to go when we're running trains. People don't want to see switching necessarily; they want to see trains running. So I can pull out a train, run on the main line uh, right from here, and so it's uh, it's actually been a very nice addition. And a lot of these trains that you have in buildings are all from the fifties. Yes, a lot of them are. They're uh, my own that I had, and they're uh, items that came from uh, Lee Stout's layout in Lambertville, New Jersey, a railroad empire. He had everything there was to have from the 50s, and uh, I purchased that uh, empire from Lee's widow and he, uh, a and few he was, years ago. He was a friend of yours. Very good friend. And, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and as he passed, there was an opportunity, and, and it's kind of a memory to him of what you've done here with the trains. Right. I uh, Even though I... I had acquired some of the same equipment in the years uh, intervening when I uh, got Lee's layout. Uh, I used put all of his on my layout and uh, sold whoever I had acquired in the meantime. So it's kind of an emotional thing with me. I was, he was a very good friend. Well, I'm sure he's quite honored with what you've done. And oh, you, he was an incredible guy. Yeah, yeah well, and, and, and you've done an incredible job with this, so that's the, uh, the beauty of it. And... Um, I'm just featuring some of the buildings. You look at the ski mountain here with the uh, with the gondola lift, and uh, those that's the ice skating rink. Uh, those were uh, two sets, uh, complete sets of skaters from look at that. the 1940s uh, that were painted in made in Germany, hand painted, two dimensional, and complete. Two dimensional. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they're full size as you're walking around them and you find out they're not, so it's pretty cool. And then here's the ski lodge, right? And we've got the Lionel Ice Station. Let's, let's see if we can get that ice station to work, and, as well as the...
There we go. That was great. How about can we get the uh, can we get the coal to work? Uh, we can. So we're looking at that uh, uh, hopper car on top and dumping now into the coal loader. So once he's dumped the load into the loader, uh, <laughs> You see the red light flashing, and the rest of the train takes off. And the job is done. Pretty cool. I saw the red light flashing. Take a look at this. This has got to be, how, what, what year is this from? Do you, That's from the early 50s. That's a quarter right. tower. It was sold by Lionel and American Flyer at the time. But the beauty of this one is it works. It bubbles. Yep, that's, still, that's the original product. Wow. Look at that. The daylight unit. And let me even feature some of the, the horse. Some of the detail there. And these are all from uh, Lee's layout and my layout that I uh, acquired over the years. All these Plasticville buildings, same thing. These are from all the early fifties. All the early fifties mm -hmm. actual items. And you'll notice uh, around the layout a lot of cars that look different. Uh, those are uh, cars from the fifties made in the UK. Really? And I have about 50 different varieties of, uh, of those cars uh, throughout the layout, complemented by other cars I've acquired in the meantime. But uh, there's a, those are very unusual. Like that road going up. Those That's are called a... dinky toys, the cars I was just thinking of. The dinkies are all over the layout. Point one out to me. Uh, this is a dinky toy. This okay. is a dinky toy Jaguar. Nice. Uh, this is a dinky toy uh, Kodak uh, truck. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is this one here? Just a cool Volkswagen. Oh yeah, this is a Volkswagen. <laughs> this is a more re recent vintage, but uh, yeah. that's not. It's not a dinky All toy. All right, not no, a dinky no. toy. This is a dinky toy. This is a dinky. This is a dinky. Okay. Yeah, those, those are, are dinkies all back there. Period correct. Right. But a lot of them are European, you know, so they're unusual. Not cars that you would see around the U.S. necessarily. Some are U.S. and some are not. Can we run that uh, daylighter over this uh, over this bridge? There we go. Put that one back in the yard and we'll get another one one rolling. Okay. I see we've got a wedding down here. Get the hobo in the car. Hiawatha, we get that running. 
beautiful woodwork here. I, I'm just curious, Ron, do these cattle actually go into the car? Uh, they actually do work out. I think I'm not quite ready to show it today. That's fine. As it turns out. Takes a little while to set up. But do me one favor, though, as I'm looking at your great boat and the fishing line with the bobber, the people swimming. Tell me about this piece here. Where'd this come from? Uh, you're talking about the... Uh, the light tower. Uh, that light tower is a, just a standard uh, uh, purchased item, you know, recently, in the last 10 years probably, really? just a Christmas item. You probably see the oil derrick there. Yeah. Let me move back on that. That's going to go up and down. Yeah. Well, it's waiting to do that. Amazingly still operating. Show, show me if you could. Show me show me this one here. And and let me get on uh, the opposite side to show okay. this. The Culvert Pipe Company. And as we come around into this center section here. Okay, this is a culvert loader. We're coming up on it. Yeah. And uh, this was the, the best accessory at Lionel made in the 50s, which is a very uh, interesting piece. And uh, he picks up the culvert and dumps it. Rolls down, ready to be loaded up. Take that one out of the way. Hold on, just a second. Yeah, go ahead, pick yeah, that, that up. Get him out of the way here. The fact that it's still operating is amazing. Still operating. Still operating. 70 years later. That is pretty cool. We've well, got the station here. Yeah, the Canadian Pacific coming around. That's pretty cool. Show me, show me, uh, well, you know, let's go around back to, tell okay. me about this area here with the tanks. I know this is kind of one yeah, of these are, uh, these are mini tanks. These are HO tanks from the 40s and 50s. HO, they're die cast, they're very heavy. They're a nice piece. So uh, I have a number of these mini tanks that I had as a kid and I, from that, I built this tank proving grounds, and a fellow named Jock Littlefield uh, had a big tank collection, and I uh, called this uh, Jock's Tank Mountain, and you'll see uh, 
tanks coming in to the uh, proving grounds and uh, others, uh, you know, around here. You see the mountain climbers in the background, they're going up to the top. You see down here the waterfalls with the boaters. That's all done in HO so that you can put so much more in that space. It gives it the flavor of depth. You get the idea of depth and you can do a lot more. We got a canoeer having a little challenge here. Yeah, this guy is going to uh, <laughs> he's going to have a big might drop his, here might, soon. Might be his uh, last good uh, canoe trip. It could be. All it right. could be. These are bridges. Uh, Mike Mandarino it, helped me build this bridge, as a matter of fact. I was having difficulty uh, uh, putting this in, and he was a great help. Tell me about just like a little piece like that. What is that? Uh, that is a sensor. This, this, yeah, it's a track okay. sensor. So what happens is there are uh, signals, uh, line signals around the layout. Okay. And uh, they have in they incorporate uh, sensors that sense when a train is there. But here you want to uh, sense when a train is here and relay it back to the signal Got at the it. start of the siding. Yeah, so, so it's, it's a triggers, true, your, yeah. triggers right. your signals. Exactly. Works very well. This is from Z Stuff Trains. Pretty cool. Now, I don't know if you want to see what the inside of a control panel looks like, but this is what it looks like from the outside. It can show everything from here. Yeah. But inside, oh we have. Uh, yeah, I, I can see it. We have all the control. These are four different uh, boards that split the power out to wow. all the track for the electronics. Wow. wow. So, all right, let's, uh, let's move over into this section. Tell me, uh, pretty cool little bus there. That bus goes back and forth to Jock's Tank Mountain. He's coming back right now to the station with people. And uh, can we talk about this Noma station? We, we will. Can we, okay. can we turn that off just so we can hear that? Because it's got specifics to it. Well, I'm waiting for you to turn that down a little bit. This is the Noma station. It's a talking station. This is the southern, uh, southwest version. And this is the Mateo station, named for my five-year-old grandson, who loves trains. Uh, he knows all about this station. He knows all about it. And then we have Stella's Diner. And a little 50s music. There you go, sure. And maybe we'll get that to smoke a little bit. And I think I see something coming out there. You see a little bit of it there coming out. Takes a little while to warm up. Yeah. We'll crank it one more time, it'll probably warm up. And I see it. Just says you just see a hint of it's coming out there. I don't know if you notice in the background, there's a pop-up here, and so when kids come over, they can stand back in there, have a stand for them to stand on, and the trains go around them, and they love being back there. We take a lot of pictures of uh, show, kids back show there. Show me that cab forward, if you could pull that out. Uh, this might be a little tricky. Let's All see right. If, can, uh, you know, if, if, if it doesn't come out, that's okay. Show me the barrels, please. Uh, I got you doing two, two things at the same time. Uh, that's tricky for me. <laughs> A little bit. That is great. 
and then Milwaukee and Road. Let's try the, uh, let's see if the lumber mill will do something good for us here. Oh, you want to see the, hold your ears on this one. All right. Can we pull that cab forward out? Yeah, let me put the cab forward. Yeah, maybe not. The oh, lights on. Yeah. Need a little push. It doesn't want to recognize him. Yeah, give him a little push and see what happens. Let's see if I can do that. No. No, no go. Uh, uh. Maybe you can show me the uh what is it? Pull out. show me the uh, this piece here. Yeah, this is a crane and this is all set up so that uh, anybody who comes can operate. We're gonna operate it from right here, Lou. And uh, essentially uh, this crane goes uh, left or right and get over the location you want you can drop drop it down and pick up your load and here we're picking up some old ties or some old steel rails And I find my uh, my son, even when he comes over here, this is what uh, he ends up playing, spending time doing. And he moves it Let's over. Let's try it again, yeah. We'll... Moves it over and puts it in there. Yeah, moves it over and puts it in. But a lot of people have uh, a lot of fun with this. No, very good. Go. <laughs> well, Ron, step back into your layout there. I'll just okay. feature some of the other little treats as I'm walking through. But, uh, and let me just take a little moment here to just, in case there's anything I missed here, but I don't think so. I'm just getting that sign back there. But that looks great. Ron. Check the level on the tender, will ya? There we go. Ron, thanks so okay. much for allowing us to come on down and video your basement. What a treat. Thank you so much. Terrific, Lou. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure.